Good morning, and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. And our top stories today, advocacy for improving retirement incomes and the case for real estate in defined contribution plans. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Sarah Sheen. She is the head of defined contribution for Prudential Global Investment Management Real Estate and also Ben Adams. He is the CEO of 10 Capital. Ben, Sarah, great to see you. Thanks for joining us on the program this morning. Good to be here. Uh, Sarah, 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 I'll start to you. And you know, this show is dedicated today to real estate. And we've talked about real estate on this program a lot, whether it's renters or uh, purchasers of real estate. But I wanted to start first with maybe some advocacy. And there's a group that you are a co-president of called the Defined Contribution Real Estate Council or DCREC. So let's start with who is the DCREC? The DCREC was founded in 2012. And we're an industry organization that's dedicated to the inclusion of public and private real estate in DC plans. And the reason that we're advocating for that is to improve participant outcomes. Okay, and, 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 and Ben, um, you were one of, I was gonna say founding fathers, it took me back to my study of the constitution, but you're one of the, the co-founders of, of DCREC. Uh, who is, who, and Sarah kind of very eloquently laid out kind of some of the membership, but can you give us a little bit more detail into some of the members and who they may be? Sure, I mean, it just, I'm not a founding father. My last name is Adams, but my grandfather changed it from Abramovitz so he could get a job, just to be clear. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so what we really, you know, it's funny, the, the organization was originally founded in 2012, but there was a lot of work that we did even for the year prior to that. I was at the Townsend Group and I ran, an, a fund of funds platform there. And something occurred to me while I was on garden leave, which was, you know, why is it that we were doing all the sophisticated portfolio management and planning and allocations across both liquid and illiquid assets in the real estate space for our institutional defined benefit clients, but I wouldn't have access to those very products in a defined contribution plan. And so that was really the germinus. And I became under the non-compete, I really had no one to advocate for or no sort of self-interest going on at the time, I just started becoming the chief cat herder to all the larger institutions that were out there that were contemplating the integration of private equity real estate vehicles and private equity real estate allocations within um, target date funds in particular. And so we first got together in 2011 and it was a, a pretty interesting meeting. At the, it was a very long day. We, we met at, at nine. We met at nine in the morning. We went to about four thirty. And at the beginning of the meeting, it was actually very interesting. Everyone was sort of guarded. There was a view on, um, you know, everyone didn't want to share their secret sauce for building the right mousetrap for valuation and understanding liquidity and how to integrate these products. But by the end of the day, everyone was completely exhausted and begging for cocktails. And so at that point. The guard kind of let down and they real, the group really coalesced and, and it coalesced around um, best practices. It coalesced upon putting the investor first. It coalesced around understanding that private equity real estate really could offer a smoother glide path and a really an improved retirement security outcome, both to and through the glide path. For the, for the benefit of American workers. And that's where people really started cooperating and it led ultimately, when it got really serious, I of course had to step away. Um, and people like Sarah and Prudential and Principal and Goldman Sachs and TIA Craft were there. Um, and it really has taken off sin, since and, and people like Sarah, when we became a dues paying uh, real organization in 2012, um, they, they just took the ball and, and ran with it. And it's a very different organization today than it was then. Sarah, it's really important, and I, I, Ben tells the story, and, and I, I know you echo it, at, at, about putting the investor first, and those participants having 
solid retirement outcomes. So if you're in a 401k, a 403b, a 457, governmental 457, you're investing, you should get the best investment alternatives and be able to reach an investment. So what's the case? Why don't you, I think I, I started the case, but I'm going to let you lay the case out for real estate within defined contribution. Sure. So the benefits of real estate in your asset allocation include things like diversification. It includes uh, better risk adjusted returns, access to income in your portfolio. And specifically in the case of private real estate, there's a downside protection component that's that's built in. And particularly when we think about 2020 and how the asset class held up, you know, compared to the broader equity and bond markets, there was much less downside to be found in private real estate than in some of these other areas. So all of these things combined make it a meaningful part of any well-balanced portfolio. And that's why DV plans and high net worth investors have been utilizing the asset class for years. And, and we're gonna to talk to some of your colleagues in the second segment, more in some of the details. But, um, you know, in term, Ben, in terms of supporting this mission, uh, you know, I, I am someone who's been, <laughs> been around the block uh, in terms of going to conferences, the advocacy, the, uh, you know, how, in terms of making sure that people are achieving what they want to achieve in terms of retirement, how is DCREC, building what Sarah said, fulfilling that mission? Well, I mean, it, first and foremost, it is a, it is a truth-seeking, <laughs> research-based organization that really does have the, the best interest of um, the individual investor at heart. And so what I've seen throughout its evolution um, is really a focus on trying to figure out and understand that this is just as much a human resources decision within the DC plans as it is an investment decision. And so to that end, the, the group has evolved. The, the, the methods on value valuation, the structure have become very, very sophisticated, but they've also become very, very simple to articulate and understand. And that's a result of really uh, the collective um, intelligentsia. You know, all, all the groups that are together really represent, I think, I don't know what the number is. It's well over 1.5 trillion in assets under management. So this is not, you know, uh, two guys in a Bloomberg trying to figure out how to create a new product. You have the full weight of the research departments of all these institutions behind you thinking about how do we lower costs and provide a more effective solution that does serve, as Sarah had mentioned, as a very effective risk management tool inside um, a, a beneficiary's portfolio. Sarah, where do we stand today right now uh, as we're recording this in terms of actual direct real estate or real estate in defined contribution plans? Is it spread across the board, meaning in all the plans, or is it in certain types of plans, large plans, small plans, et cetera? So if we take a look at DC plans today, and we include public and private real estate, it's about 30 to 40% of the plans out there that have some level of exposure. If we peel back the onion and we look at direct real estate exposure, then that's about 50 billion in daily uh, valued, daily traded products in the DC world. So, and that number continues to grow. Um, so that's where we stand today, but we really believe where we will be in five years, 10 years from now, will be a very different place given the interest that we're seeing, given the diversification benefits that folks are looking to get into these portfolios, and given the fact that you know, these DC plans are now going to be the primary savings vehicles for most Americans versus traditional DB. So we've got to get these diversifying asset classes in these plans and get you know, equal access across the board. That's a great point, Sarah. You know, when we started, there were maybe five managers um, that were really doing this with any sort of track record. And today, I mean, how many would you estimate? We, we have, uh, gosh. 16 products today. Yeah. And there's well over 23 billion, 24 billion or so um, in active management currently. But that's just a tiny drop of water coming over the dam uh, in terms of the total overall size of this market. Um, so that's, I think that's what helps create alignment candidly between DC members is they realize that this pie is huge and that they must have an attitude of abundance uh, and cooperate together if we're to properly address the best interest of the American worker. Yeah, and, and look, these investments exist in pension plans today. So I think you've got a natural 
case, and this is the case with some of the other asset classes out there. Real quick, before I let you go, I've got about a minute left, so unfortunately we don't have too much time, but I want to talk about the coronavirus and COVID, and maybe I'll start with you, Ben, maybe 30 seconds for you, and then 30 seconds for Sarah. Let's talk about coronavirus and the impact to real estate. We've talked about it on this program before, but give us your assessment. I mean, that's such a big question. So I'll try to keep this as simpler as possible, but no simpler. Um, real estate is not going away. Commercial real estate is not going away. There are going to be winners and losers um, throughout this rather challenging period, particularly within certain asset classes. We've seen some asset classes see an incredible flow of funds like industrial, life sciences, um, logistics, and so on and so forth. Um, but at the same time, um, the news that hits the, the press about, and hotel clearly has been adversely affected, but we know from what we're seeing, uh, not just from DCRC membership, but what I'm seeing in my own firm's portfolio is that there is pent up demand and that people do want to get back to the office. They want to get back to a daily schedule. And there's simply no substitute for human interaction and social con con you know, contact. Um, I, I'm ready to get back together with people. I don't know about you, Jeff. Sarah, how do you feel about this issue? I know my wife it's is time. ready for me to get back to is ready for me to get back to seeing other people as well. Sarah, I'll give you about 20 seconds, then we're gonna have to end the segment. I'm sorry. Give us your sure. No, I just say in terms of the the industry and you know the organization and its mission, you know, we've been able to pivot just as much as the industry has in terms of working virtually. You know, the industry is doing property tours virtually. You know, we're working our mission with the industry virtually. We continue to do the things that we need to do. We haven't slowed as a result of the coronavirus, but we absolutely are looking forward to being face to face and together again as many folks out there are. Yeah. Well, Sarah Sheen. Ben Adams, so great to talk to you as always. Thanks so much for joining us. And when we come back, we'll talk about more about the case for DC for real estate in defined contribution plans. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repair for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit Repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. 
Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. Now we're joined by Alan Swearingen. He is president and CEO of JLL Income Property Trust and also JT Straub. He is managing director, head of real estate for AEW. Gentlemen, great to see you as always. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Great. Jeff, happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I would say that your colleagues from the Defined Contribution Real Estate Council did a great job in the first segment, so I want to thank them. But now, for both of you, I think we want to talk about the case for real estate, direct real estate, real estate in general, in DC plans. And I'll start with you, Alan, because I think this is a really great question to kind of kick things off. Where does real estate play or sit in a diversified portfolio? And also, where does it sit in a, a, a defined contribution plan, like a 401k, a 403b, or a governmental 457? Yeah, Jeff, uh, great question. And really pleased to be here with JT, uh, my colleague, is part of the DCREC organization, which is just a, a, a fabulous organization of, of industry advocates, all trying to promote the inclusion of real estate and our defined uh, uh, contribution plans. I, I think the, the the case for real estate is 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 fundamentally made first and foremost that it has been an essential asset class and benefit plans for the last forty years. And and you know the the DB plan world uh, is is why firms like LaSalle and, and AEW exist. And um, and the DC side of the business, which has been um, uh, more led by individual investors versus institutional investors has, has been behind in adopting real estate. And, and some of that is because of the, the, the product solutions. And, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the evolution of the product solutions, but, but real estate is a fundamental asset class for all of its portfolio benefits of, of lower correlation uh, to equities and fixed income, uh, that the diversification benefits, lower volatility, uh, not doesn't bounce near around, but doesn't bounce around near as much as the equities market, uh, and a great source of income. Which again, I know we'll talk about this a little bit later, but but retirees especially need that income at later stages of, of their retirement journey. And real estate, both both public and private real estate, can be a, a great solution uh, for adding that those other portfolio benefits, but also that income. Yeah. And JT, let me come to you. And I, I want to ask you if you want to first build on Alan's comments. I think that he, you know, he laid it out very nicely. Uh, but in addition to that, one of the questions I'm, I'm sure that people out there may, may have, whether they're consultants, employers who sponsor retirement plans, or just the average investor, could you maybe walk us also walk us through the difference between public real estate, such as a REIT, and direct real estate? Because there, there, are, there are differences here. Sure, and, 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 and a lot of similarities as well, because at the end of the day, uh, we are talking about real estate and the, the differences on how that real estate is held. So on the private side, it is held through funds that are, that are managed by uh, individuals at either LaSalle or an AEW uh, that are, are going to manage the properties themselves of, of office buildings or, or retail properties or multifamily properties. And uh, they're valued on a quarterly basis and they, they're able to bring that income in and provide that to to the clients as well as the growth within those portfolios these aren't static portfolios they're actively managed where they can buy or sell those properties on the public side uh it, it's run in a very similar fashion however uh companies such as as uh you know a kimco or a boston property that owns a lot of office space uh, throughout the u.s owns thousands of properties they decide to take those companies public into, this, into the public markets that trade just like any other stock out there, they're able to access the public market capital stack. So they can issue equity to raise capital. They can go to the debt markets or the preferred markets and be able to raise that capital because again, these are not static assets. They're able to put that money to work in investing in the new properties, upkeep on new ones and, and ex execute strategies uh, to continue to, to grow these portfolios on for the benefit of the shareholders. And, and what you receive then is, is that income. So whether the income's coming in from the private side or the growth coming from the private side or the public side, it's really, as, as Alan was saying, this has been done for 40 plus years within the institutional markets. Within the DC market, 
it's traditionally just been done on, on the listed side where you had the daily valuation of the public equity. But today from the work that DC Rec has done, as well as uh, firms like ours, we're able to come now to the DC markets with, with uh, solutions for, for the investors that have both public and private. And you're really able to get uh, great broad diversified portfolios uh, across the multiple asset classes within real estate. Yeah, and Alan, you know, when I, having worked in the, in the retirement industry uh, as well, I mean, there are many pensions, there are endowments and foundations that use direct real estate. And I, I'd ask you, how, how do you and how do the other members of the DCRC kind of see the, this incorporated in the DC plans? Is it a direct investment option or is it incorporated as part of a broader fund of funds like a target date fund? You know, Jeff, it's, it's both. Um, and, uh, and it's kind of all of the above. Um, and um, we, we've seen uh, slower adoption of uh, d direct solutions into DC plans, but, but it's accelerating. Um, there are a number of our members within uh, the Defined Contribution Real Estate Council that have had products for uh, 10, 15 years that were available uh, as a direct investment solution within um, a, a, a 401k plan. Um, uh, what you're also seeing now today is um, uh, an increasing interest in, in the target date fund world, which is, which is a whole different um, uh, model of investing where um, the, the sponsor of a target date fund um, evolves uh, the, the asset allocation model uh, for the investor based upon what their retirement horizon looks like which actually makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, if you're younger and, and, and not like JT and me. <laughs> or me, or me. Yeah, if you're younger, you know. Um, but if you're younger, um, you know, most people, most advisors would say, listen, you're not going to need this money for a while and you're not going to have access to it for a while. Um, think about a higher allocation equities and a, and a, and a lower allocation to fixed income and, and more stable value. Um, uh, what, what people have found is that individual investors with their own 401ks don't do as good a job in, in managing the, those asset allocations as they get older and older. People, unfortunately, don't go look at their allocations as often as they used to. So the target date fund solution is designed to, to have the manager underlying that um, uh, make those adjustments. And, and what we're seeing is that with, because these target date funds are, are these pools of capital are getting larger and larger, they are able to manage two of the, 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 the uh, challenges historically of direct real estate anyway, not, not public real estate, but direct real estate in uh, directly with DC plans um, in that those two big challenges historically have been, you know, regular, re the, 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 the frequency of valuations and then liquidity. Um, within a big target date fund, uh, the manager can adjust those asset allocations and they have all sorts of other liquid assets to draw from um, to, to meet any sort of liquidity needs if a person retires and actually wants to take their money out of the plan. Um, so the target date funds uh, have really been a good solution for that. Um, and, and DCREC is working diligently to continue to now to educate those um, uh, managers of those funds about using both public and, and direct real estate in that solution uh, for the long haul. And, uh, and, and you can see that uh, the DC plan world that has had smaller kind of lower allocations to real estate actually has suffered to some degree from some level of underperformance compared to the DB world. You know, if you look at the return performance over a long period of time, um, uh, the, the DC returns have has lagged the DB returns, and 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 that's not just because of real estate. Some of that is because a lot of, uh, of of lower inclusion of all alternative investments. Um, but uh, those of us at DCREC are, are working really hard to to try to educate and and develop best practices uh, to make uh, real estate both public and private uh, a, a, a higher inclusion. JT, let me let me let me start with you and kind of round out. We've only got a, about two minutes left in the in our segment, but um, you know, I think a lot of progress has been made since it's since the founding of the DCREC in terms of proliferation of of uh, DC plans with real estate. But I want to get your 
maybe prognostication, your thoughts around where do we look 10 years from now? I think Alan makes, makes a great case. Your colleagues in the first segment made a great case, but I want to get your perspective. Where, where do you see things in the next 10 years for DC and real estate? I, I, I think real estate will be and should be just part of an allocation, just like stocks and bonds. And over the next 10 years, I think that becomes just more accepted and commonplace. It's, it's not a decision of, do we include real estate is how much. And you know, typically over these pension plans that have been investing in the real estate over the last 40 plus years, it, it does work in that range of you know, 10% plus or minus uh, to these allocations. It's, it's a fantastic asset class that has a lot of durability of income. And the income component, as Alan's talked about, is, is very important, especially as we have this retirement crisis of a lot of uh, retirees that, that continue to enter into our markets that, that need that retirement income, especially in an interest rate environment that we're in today. And as, as we've been talking about, whether it's the public or the private side, these are not static assets. These are these are fantastic real estate assets managed by excellent teams uh, that are are continuing to evolve. So there is a capital appreciation component to it that we that we're not spending as much time talking about here. There's new asset classes that real estate is investing into, such as data centers, single family homes for rent. A lot of the themes that you would uh, hear about and talk about on the on the equity side of the equation, there's there's real estate components that are tied to that that our industry as well gets the benefit of. Uh, but I believe that real estate will really be seen as a, what it is, a, a true anchor within these portfolios that's not correlated uh, the same to stocks and bonds. So it provides that great diversification, but will continue to deliver uh, that, that income component, which is so important uh, to, to uh, helping uh, the, re the retirement uh, problem that we do have today. Well, gentlemen, I, you know, I, I want to thank you both, and I want to thank your colleagues, Sarah Sheen and Ben Adams, for also appearing on the program. Wish you and the DCREC all the best, and look, we look forward to having you back on the program, all of you, uh, in the coming weeks and months. Take care. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. And that wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, then drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, so much more all in one place. Check out today's edition of our newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Don't forget we're back again tomorrow. So until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The tax doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a Tax Doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.